Since independence, Kenyans have lived with an all-powerful presidency with sweeping powers to hire and fire, as well as dictate the direction of many national issues, including sharing of national resources. The search for a new constitution has largely been premised on the need to make the executive more accountable and responsible to Kenyans. Tulisema hatutaki mutu moja anaitwa rais awe na mamlaka ya kupindukiwa. According to legal analyst Dr. Kithure Kindiki, this may not necessarily be the case. What we have, of course, is a presidential system, but it is a checked presidential system. Just like in the current constitution, in the proposed constitution, the president remains both the head of state and government, as well as commander-in-chief of the defense forces and chairman of the National Security Council. The president will also have powers to hire and fire the cabinet ministers, although parliament, just like in the American system, will have the powers to vet and approve all the presidential appointments. The kind of checks and balances that are there on the presidency are adequate. But critics argue that in a situation where the president's party has a majority in parliament, then the president can use his powers to appoint his henchmen and women to cabinet, thus defeating the very purpose of accountable leadership. The draft constitution has however applied several breaks on the president's powers. The president will no longer have control of the parliamentary calendar. Unlike the current situation, the draft constitution states that the president or his deputy can be impeached without triggering a fresh general election. And despite the draft providing for a two-tier devolved government with counties as the units of devolution, critics of the proposed new law argue that a three-tier devolved government with powerful regional governments would trim some of the president's powers, thus providing another check to the presidency. Francis Gashuri, Citizen, live at 9.